Welcome to the demonstration section of the 3D printer training at the UT Design Makerspace. My name is Hudson Samuels. At the time of this recording, I am the Vice President of UT Design Makerspace, and I welcome you to the second part of our training. In this section, I'll be going over how exactly we use the 3D printers in real life rather than you have to watch a presentation. Here, we'll go over things like downloading a 3D model, slicing it, putting it into Octoprint, inserting filament, removing filament, and more. So to start off, let's go ahead and get us a 3D model to print. Now, for beginners, I usually recommend Thingiverse because it is an extremely popular 3D model website. You can really download anything you want from here, and a lot of open source models are available. So for our specific example, I already have a model downloaded, but if you wanted to download your own, a good starter file is a Benchy. So just go ahead and type in what you'd like in the search bar. And then 3D Benchy is the first result, usually, if you look up Benchy. And it looks like this little boat. To download things from Thingiverse, we recommend going to the Thing Files button here and selecting the individual file you'd like to download. In our case, you would click this download button to download the Benchy. The reason you do this instead of clicking download at the top is because downloading all files can download a lot of extra files that you may or may not need. If you do need all files within a Thingiverse post, feel free to use this option. Once you have downloaded your file, you will want to slice it so that way you can send it to a 3D printer. Let's begin using Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer is the only slicer that we officially support. However, if you are experienced with Cura or other slicers, feel free to use those at your own discretion. For our example, I'm going to slice a model that I already have downloaded, a super simple one based on Super Smash Bros. Amiibo, this Inner Smash Plane Amiibo base. To import to Prusa Slicer is very simple. Simply drag and drop your item into Prusa Slicer. If you followed along with our wiki page for configuring Prusa Slicer, you should be good to go. However, if you haven't, please check our wiki for the Prusa Slicer tutorial. That way, you can configure your Prusa Slicer to look like mine, and that way you can slice properly for certain printers that require extra configuration, such as the CR10 V2. Once you have your Prusa Slicer configured, you'll be able to slice properly. So let's go ahead and slice this model that I've brought in here. So let's go over every option in Prusa Slicer and how it can be used for your print. The first thing you want to select is your printer. While this may sound simple, there are certain advantages and disadvantages to each printer. Let's go over those real quick. The CR10 V2 is our largest printer available. You'll notice that it has a large glass bed preview. However, because of the glass bed, it can be a little bit harder to remove parts, and you usually want to use this for your larger prints because of the inaccuracy of the nozzle. However, this can be really rewarding for larger structures like drawers or shelves. The Ender 3 BL Touch is our most popular model. You'll see this on white, red, green, and more. The Ender 3 is a good balance between size and quality, as it's an easy to use open source printer with a good bed size. We'll use this for our example. Our final most popular option is the Prusa Mini Plus. While it has a small build size, it has support for PETG at the UT Design Makerspace and is extremely useful for detailed prints. It takes slightly longer, however, you can get a lot better detail with these for things like minis or bases. Going back to the Ender 3 BL Touch, let's go over the other options. Print settings. Generally, this just means how high of quality and how long you're willing to spend on a print. The lower the number means that each layer height will be slightly smaller than the last. However, the higher you go in these numbers means that your print will take less time but still have less quality. For example, if you slice at super detail, 0 0.08 millimeters, this base will look really, really detailed. However, it will take an extremely long amount of time. But we also don't want super draft because it will look extremely ugly and you'll be able to see all of the layer lines, even though it'll be super quick. So for our example, we'll go with optimal. Filament. Generally, you're going to use generic PLA. 
The reason being, even though some printers support PETG or other filaments, we generally only support PLA here. Please make sure that you don't select any of the other PLA options like 123 uh, Jupiter PLA or Creality PLA. Only select Generic PLA unless you see a manufacturer that you are using the PLA for. However, this is pretty uncommon, so generally you'll want to stick with Generic. Supports. For our specific model, we don't need supports because bridging will allow us to go in between the small gaps on our object. However, if you had a large object with a large amount of air underneath, you would likely want to enable supports. We generally recommend that you enable everywhere supports, so that way if you have an object like a C, there are supports put in between. Support on build plate only means that if you're printing something like an upside down L, everything that touches the build plate will work as a support, but if you were to print a C, there would not be supports generated within the C. For support enforcers only isn't a setting we generally recommend. Infill. Generally, you'll want this set to 15%. It's the amount that the inside of the structure is filled. 15% is good for maintaining a solid structure without using too much filament. However, if you want something a tiny bit more flexible, you may want 5%. If you need something tougher, maybe 30 to 40%. It really depends on your specific needs. The brim is an option that we don't necessarily recommend just because it's extra filament. However, if you're having trouble getting your part to stick to the bed, a brim can be a good option. If you are having trouble with your part sticking to the bed, we recommend contacting a makerspace officer first, just so that way we can take a look and make sure it's not a problem on our end. And finally, moving around your part. You can see at the bottom right here, there are position, rotation, and size options for your print. Feel free to move these however you'd like. However, we recommend that you stick the flattest part of your print at the bottom, so that way the printer isn't taking too much extra time trying to generate supports. Once you're satisfied with the setup of your print, go ahead and select the Slice Now option. Once you've done this, you'll see a layer-by-layer -layer detailed map of how your G-code looks. Feel free to use the slider on the right to move up and down your layers and see what they look like. If you're satisfied with how your G-code looks, simply click the Export G-code button. This will bring up a menu allowing you to export your G-code. For our specific example, I have already exported the file that I will want to use here. Let's move on to using Octoprint. To begin, go to the website of the printer you're wanting to use. Generally, if the printer has a colored band at the top of the printer, that indicates that it is a color that you want to type into your browser. However, certain printers that are new, such as the Max, do not have a color. Please watch for a label or color on the printer that you want to use. In our case, we will be using green as a demonstration. So we typed in green.utd.ms. Please note sometimes you will get this connection, not private error. But in our specific case, uh, this is totally fine. This is within a localized network. Click the advanced button and then click proceed to greenutd.ms. The first time you encounter this screen, you will likely see a login page. Simply type in your makerspace information and hit log in. We recommend enabling the remember me option so you don't have to log in every time. Once you have logged in, you will see a blank screen and then a loading icon. Once this has disappeared, you see the full Octoprint interface. To upload your G code, simply open it in your file explorer and drag and drop on the left side of the screen, not the right side. The left side is the side that you want to use because it is significantly quicker and will not upload it to the SD card. If you upload it to the SD card, this will take a lot of time. Your file will upload, and once it's done, you'll see it highlighted on the left. So we can see here our file. Please ignore that this is a CR10 file as this is only for demonstration purposes. 
Once you are ready to print, let's talk about loading filament. For our specific case, we're going to be using PLA as an example. The first thing you want to do is heat up the tool so that way you are able to insert or remove filament. To do this, click on the target temperature for the tool in OctoPrint. Type in a high number like 200 degrees Celsius. This will heat up the nozzle enough that PLA is able to go through smoothly. Then hit the check mark. We'll now go over to the printer to talk about the loading and unloading procedures for filament. Once we're done with that, we'll head back here and continue discussing OctoPrint. Here's what the Ender 3 that we'll be using looks like. This specific printer is green, as you can tell. To start with, we're going to need some generic PLA as we defined in our G code. Here's the PLA that we'll be using. You can see here that the end of the filament is a bit blunt. This is hard for the printer to actually process, so we're going to take some clippers here, and we're going to cut at a 45 degree angle. You'll know that the angle is good if when you touch the tip of the filament, it's sharp and pokes you just a little bit. There we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually load the filament into the printer. Once the printer is heated up, take your filament spool and put it on the spool holder, like so. Then take the end of the filament and you want to guide it through the filament guide on the side of the printer. Continue pulling the filament until it reaches the extruder hole down where you can see the end of the filament. Now you'll want to put it in that little hole that I poked and grip that little lever that I've got my index finger on. You want to create just enough of a gap to where you can fit that filament through there. There will be a second hole where that Creality logo is, but you're probably going to have to angle your filament around a little bit until it goes through. So you can see here that I'm sort of struggling to put it through, but eventually I do get it in, like so. Next, all you need to do is push really hard on the filament without bending it or snapping it. This will move it all the way to the extruder, and you'll need some resistance. Once you meet that resistance, you'll just need to keep pushing. You'll begin to see some filament come out of the end. It'll probably be a different color than what you put in, and that's okay. All you need to do is keep pushing until you see the color that you want coming out. So in this example, you'll see that the blue is turning to red, and that's exactly what we want. Unloading the filament is a very similar process. Instead of pushing, all you need to do is pull. Simply grab the lever like I'm doing here, and slowly pull out your filament from the extruder. You'll notice there's a good amount to pull out just because of all that excess in the Bowden tube. Once you've got it pulled out, you want to remove the filament from that filament guide there by snapping it out, and then keeping your filament pulled tight as you wind it around the filament spool. Then all you're going to want to do is guide your filament through the manufacturer provided holes in your spool. That way it stays tight and you don't lose track of where the end of the filament is. Now that you've mastered that, you're ready to 3D print.